Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk to you guys about some of my thoughts on the crypto blockchain markets in general. These are very I'm trying to be more big picture with this video. And I want to do that because I do feel that there's something to be said for trying to pay attention to the things that matter most, the biggest things. What are the things that have the most likely chance? of impacting our particular token, your particular token's price. And I think the bigger things have a bigger chance of affecting the price. So right now, we have the Fed raising interest rates. They are now hawkish. And we haven't had a really hawkish Fed since the beginning of crypto. And I think that is meaningful to me. It is worth paying attention to. It appears that they're going to be hawkish for a little while longer, possibly till quarter two of next year. We will see. I want to show you guys a chart of the S&P 500 and just give you some thoughts that are on my mind right now, trying to give myself perspective for what we are in, what we are experiencing, and what we may experience ahead. So like I said, this is the S&P 500. I want to draw attention to what happened in 2000 and then a 2008 crash. One observation is that from the top, the peak of the S&P 500 to the bottom was about two years. The peak, the top to the bottom of the 2008 crash was about two years. The drops were about 50% roughly each time. And if you compare that to where we're at now, we're roughly, very roughly a year in, and we've dropped roughly half of it. So we're halfway to 50%. Doesn't mean that we're gonna go drop for two years, doesn't mean that we're gonna drop to 50%, doesn't mean we're not gonna drop more and go longer. But this is just, this is what it is. This is the S&P 500. This is what's happened in the past. And it's, it's worth me, I actually take comfort in this because the perspective helps me <clears throat> to decide what to do. How do I take advantage of the markets doing what markets do? And that's what I want to do. I don't want to blame the market. It's going lower than I thought. How dare the market do that? That's not a game or a thought process that I ever want to fall into. I want to look to what I can control and set myself up to win. And I'm going to the little bit broader market right now just to, to look at what has happened there at a time scale longer then crypto has existed because crypto existed, right? Bitcoin came out in 2009 and more or less for Bitcoin's existence, the broader markets have been on a good run. Blockchain hasn't really experienced a hard time like this. We don't have something to look back to that are like either of these times. And in my opinion, these two times are relatively recent history. We have a lot longer history of stock markets in general to look back to. And I'm just drawing these at the moment because that's what I have in front of me. And I think it's worth some perspective. And another chart that I like to look at is the PMI, the Purchasing Managers Index. And all this really is showing is basically if companies are basically buying or getting rid of inventory, the more that their um, things are good basically for companies in general, the higher up the graph this line will be. And the farther down the worse, it's from zero to 150s, they're holding steady. In October, the PMI for America, the United States, was 50, so they are roughly flat. I think there's a chance that we have farther down to go. I don't, given our current situation, I think it's possible, we may have some upside along the way, but it's possible that we go lower. And the fact that we're only at 50 
suggests to me just that the companies aren't experiencing, at least in October, they weren't experiencing a massive amount of pain. And it's possible, in my opinion, that we are going to experience a massive amount of pain. I don't want this video to be a bearish video. This is, this is me trying to tell you what I'm thinking about, what I'm paying attention to, for you guys to use however you best see fit. And I take comfort in considering the downside. If I can have a plan that I win, considering the downside, that gives me comfort. If it, for example, if I'm making a decision that will screw me, if the, the good case plays out and I, if the good case doesn't play out, I do not sleep well. That does not give me comfort. Looking at the potential bad that could happen, I actually find comforting, especially if I can find a way that I win, whether the price goes up or down, for example. And so one thing that I will be looking to, very simply, trying, trying again to talk about what are the big things, in my opinion, that matter. I think the Fed is a big player. It affects things. I want to pay attention to what the Fed is doing. They're currently kind of basically pushing price down. That's the expected effect of their current actions. That's worth paying attention to. Also, bigger picture, the FTX ripple effects are not necessarily played out yet. And that could also be a relatively meaningful thing that is pushing prices down. We also have the SEC coming after crypto, coming after blockchain, specifically coming after the hexagon community right now. And that could be a big thing, a big narrative that affects things to the downside. So I'm trying to take these into account. So how do I win? Well, for me, I don't know that these things, like maybe there's a chance that these things are already factored into the current price. It's a chance. And maybe that means we've already bought them. Maybe we've had so much fear and the knowledge of these things are so real in people's minds that the price has already corrected from them. These things are not under the table unknown things. These are very well-known things. It's a chance that the price has reacted and it may we may have already bought them. So I have my bags here just in case and I am happy if we have bottomed and go up. But I think there's a chance that the broader market has further down. And so I haven't gone all in here. I have more funds set aside. And what I'm really going to be looking to again is within crypto, going into a little bit smaller picture than the, the macro economy, I'll probably be looking closely at Bitcoin and Ethereum. And I'll be looking at really uh, long time scale, very basic trend changes, basically. So I'll basically want to see one thing I'll be looking at is we roughly have a very crooked line. Uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. So we've got a basic trend line going down, I want to see something like us go above this test it and break up, I want to see a higher low breaking past the basic trend line to suggest that maybe we've actually bottomed. I'll look for the same thing on Ethereum. And, you know, draw a basic trend line, see if we break above it and and test it and bounce up. That would be a good sign, especially the on a longer time scale. And taking into account how long in our, like I said, to me, relatively recent history, it's taken for the S&P 500 to bottom. We may have a while left before crypto bottoms. It's possible. And I want to be playing the game in a way that I'm not totally screwed if that scenario plays out. And so basically the funds that I have set aside, I'm really going to be very patient with. I'm, ex I'm expecting to be very patient with letting the market tell me what the market thinks, and then I will be ready to deploy funds when the time comes. And I don't have to be anxious 
or make something happen in the meantime. I, I can sit back and watch it and save money in the meantime and just be ready for opportunity when it comes. Recognizing, like asking myself, can I wait a year or more for the bottom to, to come and for me to, to take comfort and emotional strength right now, I would need to have, yes, if that happens, I will be okay. I do also want to talk about, like, what if it gets really, really bad? What does that mean? I don't know. But let's just say massive, massive price drop. Like, people start saying that this blockchain experiment has failed, trying to paint the worst case scenario. And price has gone way lower than, than people would ever predict. I currently don't think that this blockchain idea, this specifically DeFi, is going away. And regardless of the current emotional impact on price, I don't think it's going away. I think, this is just me speaking for myself, this is my current explanation. I don't think, I basically think that this DeFi is solving a problem has the potential to solve it better than any other ways we have of solving it. The ability to be transparent in where we are putting our funds to trade without a third party is to me a, appears to be a beautiful idea. And I don't want to pretend to know, even if that idea, if I'm right, that this isn't going away. I also don't want to pretend to, to know which tokens Bitcoin, Ethereum, Hex, whatever, are actually going to be the ones, a new token maybe, that come out the other end looking awesome. I do love the fact that there are so many tokens doing their own take on uh, iterating and improving and trying new ideas relatively quickly on how to solve this problem. I don't think, I don't think this problem's like going to be solved better than with blockchain. And so if the price drops massively, I think it's not going away because I don't think there's a better way to solve this problem than what we've got going here. And my desire to buy the bottom, which is like I said, is probably going to be related to um, testing of the, the going above the trend line and, and bouncing off of it. Um, the reason I'll have confidence to buy when the price is really low is because I have confidence that this idea isn't going away and this is going to draw people in because people are going to have and find value in DeFi. And even if emotions are pushing the other direction, get out of this crazy thing that's failing, I don't think it's actually going to fail. That's my thought. And I also don't like, I, I do not like the fiat way of doing things. I do not like that the government has the ability to when someone works, they get paid for it. They store that value. The government can inflate away that value. To me, that is that is not right. I like the idea of a system that is programmed in and you know what the supply is and it's a free market. The market will tell you if storing your value in this particular token was a good or a bad idea. I want to play the free market. I want to play the real world and not have individuals um, manipulating the price in a way that I think is often untruthful. What happened with FTX to me was untruthful. They said one thing, did another thing. That is centralized finance. I do not want that. It is fine. If I invest in a cryptocurrency and individuals within that cryptocurrency decide that it is not valuable and then dump the price, that is a different reality than lies, than people saying we're going to do this and doing this. DeFi gives the ability for transparency and knowing that it's actually free market deciding the value of a particular token. And I, I think that idea is strong and good and we have the ability to continue improving on how that exactly looks and how that works. And I'm 
wanting to be a part of that. And if the price drops massively, I will still want to play that game. I don't know that the price is dropping. Like I said, that's why I have bags now. But if, but I, but I am prepared to take advantage of the opportunity of price, of price dropping. And that's kind of how I'm thinking of it right now. And I'm trying to put myself, play through the scenarios. If this takes two years or who knows, some massive amount of time relative to cryptocurrency history to recover, can I survive? Can I survive that? Can I use that to my advantage? And I'm asking myself these questions. And uh, so far, I feel up for the challenge personally. And these are some ways that I'm thinking about it. I do also feel, for what it's worth, DeFi and tokens in general are very interesting. They're different when it comes to determining what is their objective value. It's a different thought process than I feel much of history, than I feel like much of individuals in history have been able to decide the value of something. And it and it lends to volatility among other reasons for volatility. It is hard to objectify that Ethereum, for example, is worth a certain amount of money. Out of DeFi, if you're going to buy an apartment complex, you look at the income the apartment complex is giving you relative to the price, and you feel that, well, if I can rent it for this, that income is worth this amount of money to buy that apartment complex. You get paid in a different, usually uncorrelated asset from the asset you buy. You get paid in dollars for buying an apartment complex. Crypto's weird in a lot of cases because you get paid oftentimes in like kind. You get paid in the same currency that you invested in. If you stake Ethereum, you get paid in Ethereum. If the Ethereum price goes down, even if your percentage return is the same, you're getting paid in Ethereum. And the, the dollar value you get also goes down even if it's the same percentage. And that is, it is harder to look at in a value investing mindset, in my opinion. Cryptocurrency in general is harder to quantify like what is the innate value is a common question within cryptocurrency. And I understand for me, it is hard and it really is to me, uh, more emotionally feeling based than many things, because it's very hard to look to something that is more concrete, like the income in another asset that the thing gives you. Cryptocurrency doesn't really have for the most part, um, uh, solid ways of, of solving that problem. You can lend for stable coins. You can do certain things that, that are more like, uh, more similar to, to value vesting and sorts, but it, crypto is a lot more speculative and supply and demand is in my opinion, the reality of almost any store of value. The apartment complex is only worth what people will pay for it. Bitcoin is only worth what people will pay for it. But the the um, the ease and the comfort that one has in I'm just using an apartment complex, but a business buying a business is the same way. What's the income versus the cost of the business? Um, it's easier to find comfort and security in outside the cryptocurrency, uh, the blockchain. Um, it's easier to find relative comfort in a particular value, in my opinion, and the lack of well, what's Ethereum worth? Is it worth $1,400? Is it worth $4,000? It's very speculative on the individual's ability to determine uh, what other people are going to think. That's really what it's about. And that is a reason why I think community is really valuable in looking at tokens. Are the people going to be there? Are they going to be pushing the narrative, telling people why this particular one is better than others? And uh, it does play into why I invest in certain tokens myself over others. It's a reason I like Hex. I think the Hex community is very, very strong. And I think it has a chance. If we have a long bear market, I think Hex has a chance of coming out the other end. People are staked. They're going to want their value to be valuable at the end of two years, I think. And it's speculative. I don't know that's going to happen. It's just um, the chances that that one survives to me seem higher. 
um, than, than some others. And that's just an example, but it's, it's interesting. So the price could drop a lot. I think that it's possible that, that tokens in general drop. I don't know that it will. Like I said, it could already be baked in, but I see some relatively simple reasons why we may drop and relatively simple reasons why it may take some time till we reach bottom, yet alone build back from there. And I know that I want to be in a position to take advantage of that. And I'm going to be trying to be patient, waiting for some kind of confirmation, waiting for the Fed to change their narrative. Some of these bigger picture, impactful things to suggest that we are in a different paradigm again, and it's now bullish. And really, I hope this isn't complex. I hope this isn't bearish. I mean, I want it to be what it is. I do not want to be the channel that tells you what you want to hear. I want to tell you as truthfully as I can the way that I currently see it, knowing I don't know. And uh, it's just a person talking, trying to make good decisions himself and sharing with you guys. And, uh, and these are some thoughts that are on my mind. And so, yeah, in the meantime, generating income, waiting for a confirmation of a bottom, and then I'm going to deploy funds because my current explanation is this is not going away. That's why I would want to deploy funds when the prices are very low. I think this is coming back. I don't know like how high it's going to go. I can't speculate confidently on what the prices of any particular token are going to be. I just don't think they're going away. And for me, I want to be a part of this DeFi thing. I like transparency. To me, it is close to truth. Truth is often painful in the short term, but it looks really good in the long term. As time tests it, if this decentralized thing is actually a good thing, I think over time it will appear so, and I'm betting on the fact that it will. Anyway, guys, those are some of my thoughts. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you in the next one.